Today is the feast of the immaculate conception of our blessed mother. Because we celebrate the birthday of Mary on September 8th, the church in a dogma through Pius IX in the year 1854 on December 8th had instituted as a dogma that our Blessed Mother herself was immaculately conceived. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception is therefore celebrated on December 8th because after she was conceived in the womb of her mother immaculately, eight months later on September 8th, she is born. The fact that Mary was immaculately conceived has basis in scripture because when the angel Gabriel makes the announcement to Mary, he refers to her as full of grace. There is no doubt whatever that the grace given to Mary is a gift of God. Nevertheless, the fact that the angel refers to her as full of grace is an indication that she was immaculately conceived in the womb of her mother. Whatever importance Mary has in the church is because of her son Jesus. Everything she is, everything she continues to be is attributed by her to her son and therefore Mary constantly leads us to Jesus. In the Gospel of John chapter 19 verses 25 to 27, Jesus defines through John the meaning of his church. So Jesus is hanging on the cross and we are told that even as he hangs on the cross, there is the beloved disciple and the mother of Jesus. When Jesus sees his mother, he points the beloved disciple to her as his son when he tells her, woman, this is your son. And then the, Jesus on the cross says to the beloved disciple, this is your mother, pointing to his own mother. And we are told from that moment on, the disciples took Mary or took the mother of Jesus into his own home. What is the evangelist John telling us through this? He is saying that the church which Jesus instituted is made up of three elements. And those three elements are first the spirit of Jesus given from the cross. The mother of Jesus who is an integral part of the church and the beloved disciple. While the beloved disciple is also a historical figure, the beloved disciple stands for anyone and everyone who loves Jesus. In other words, if you claim to be a beloved disciple, if you claim to love Jesus, then you have to to take his mother into your home. In John's ecclesiology, there is no church without any of these three elements. The spirit of Jesus, the mother of Jesus, and the beloved disciple, anyone who loves Jesus. For the feast of the Immaculate Conception, which today is a dogma in the church, the church reads from the Annunciation to Mary in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The scene is that Mary is engaged in the activity in which she usually is. She is a woman at peace with herself with no regrets about the past and no obsession with the future, but living in the present moment. And even as she lives in her present moment, the angel announces to her this revolutionary announcement that she is to be the mother of God. Mary's response first is to be alarmed. 
to wonder how this can be. But when the angel responds with an explanation which is not rational, which is not reasonable, because the angel says the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, these explanations are not reasonable. They cannot really be calculated. They cannot be seen with the naked eye. They can only be experienced with a heart that opens itself to God. And even though Mary's mind cannot fathom, cannot understand what the angel is saying, Mary's heart responds to the angel in these words, let it be done to me. Mary expresses a passive activity or an active passivity. She will be malleable. She will be vulnerable. She will let God work in her. And that is the lesson which Mary teaches us. There are numerous times in our lives when we really cannot understand why things happen the way they do. And we are tempted to throw in the towel at those times, to give up and to give in. Mary and the Feast of the Immaculate Conception are saying to us, you need to keep on keeping on. You need to persevere because God is ultimately in charge. You simply do what has to be done to the best of your ability and then leave whatever remains in God's hands knowing that whatever happens will happen for God's glory and for your good. This is the lesson which Mary gives us. She also tells us that we need to be open and receptive. In the play Hamlet, Hamlet says to his friend Horatio in one scene, there are more things in heaven and on earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophies. In other words, there are things which we can explain today. There are things which are rational and reasonable. There are things which we can do through experimentation. However, there are also many, many things in our universe that are still inexplicable, that we will never be able to understand or explain what must be our response to them. Our response to them must not be of fear. Our response to them must not be of aggression. Our response must be of openness, of receptivity, like Mary's was. And so, on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, as we honor our Blessed Mother and as we thank her for her gift of openness, let us ask for her intercession. And the intercession is that at those times in our lives when things go awry, when we do not look at things as according to our plans, we say, let it be done to me according to your word. When there are things which go beyond our comprehension, when we cannot understand them, our response will never be one of confrontation or aggression. Our response, again, like Mary will be, let it be done to me according to your word. Mary teaches us to do our best and leave God to do the rest. Mary teaches us to live in the present moment, without regrets about the past, without obsession for the future, because only the now is real. A very happy feast of the Immaculate Conception of Mary to everyone.